Hello and a very warm welcome to Wazor TV Insights. My name is Tandobe and I'm happy to be with you for another conversation. Last Monday, we started a conversation on mental health and Garnet Akwe was kind enough to join us and take us through many issues. She gave us explanations. She helped us to understand what can be done or must be done and how we can take care of our mental health. Tonight, we will continue from where we left off, spending some time to discuss suicide, depression, and bipolar disorder, which were some of the issues that came out of last week's conversation. Wizard TV Insights is an opportunity for us to gather around our TV sets via Facebook and YouTube, or if you are watching on the HD Plus app, to have a conversation. We make you a part of our very interesting conversations that focus on socio-economic issues, lifestyle, professional, family values, national issues that impact on us all. What we do here is to situate the issues in a national conversation so that every viewer, you and I, can practically identify, share our experiences, our thoughts, and also contribute to the conversation. Are you someone who feels like crying all the time for no apparent reason? Or you are that person who is having more sleep than usual, with a feeling of tiredness each time you think about starting your day? Or do you constantly find yourself trapped in negative thought patterns? Tonight's conversation with Standogbe is about suicide, depression, and bipolar. It is for you. Get ready and let's have an important, educative, and informative conversation tonight. Send your questions, your comments, and your contributions via WhatsApp 055 269 7939 or via email wazertv at wazergroup.com. I invite you to also follow us on Facebook. The handle is at wazertv, spelled W O E Z O R T V. And also subscribe to our YouTube channel at Wazor TV. Our website is www.wazor.tv. I'll be back and introduce our guest for tonight and the issues after these messages. <music> sugar free freshly squeezed fruit juice choose green line fruit juice and smoothies filled with vitamin c calcium iron fiber and zinc every drop of green line juice and smoothies is naturally made to give you energy good health and refreshment enjoy your favorite green line orange pineapple passion watermelon pineapple and turmeric pineapple beetroot pineapple and ginger and healthy green green line fruit juice and smoothies powered by nature embarrassed too embarrassed to speak to a loved one too embarrassed to speak to your doctor too embarrassed when in our lifetime, one in four black men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer. One in 12 black men will die from prostate cancer. Let me repeat that. One in four black men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer. One in 12 black men will die from prostate cancer disease. One in 12. That could be your dad, even your older brother, uncle or grandfather. You need to make sure they are not embarrassed to speak to you or their doctor about it. Hey, Dad, have you had your prostate checked out? See, how hard is that? It's easy. Just start the conversation. Prostate cancer is survivable if caught and treated early enough. Don't let embarrassment stop you having this important conversation. You may save someone's life. 
not just your own. From the Lenclay Sports Stadium to the Santiago Bernabeu, from the Boko Marina to the Madison Square Gardens, we would make sure that you do not miss out on all the scoop, the kicks, and all the flicks in the world of sports, from association football to boxing to hockey to tennis. We make sure that we bring the action to you right in your home. And for our Panthers out there as well, we have something very special for you in the Investors Corner. Join me on Wazo TV every Tuesday from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. for Ghana's number one sports post-mortem show, The Arena. My name is Kosi Fiaka, and I would be your host. Thank you for staying with us here on Weasel TV. Mental health is more than the absence of mental disorders. It is an integral part of health. There is no health without mental health. Mental health is a state of well-being in which an individual realizes his or her own abilities, can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work productively, and is able to make a contribution to his or her community. Tonight, we are zooming in on suicide, clinical depression, and bipolar disorder. And our guest for the conversation is Madam Sarah Texan. She will help us understand, know, and determine how best these conditions of the mind can be managed and treated. Sarah is a clinical psychologist and researcher. I must recognize that just like Garnet, Sarah has an MPhil in clinical psychology. This is how she sums up our conversation for tonight. Quote, you are not your illness or diagnosis. Life can be whatever you want it to be. Sarah, thank you for making the time to join us and welcome to Wizard TV. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Good. Um, we, we, we've been discussing mental health uh, from last week, a number of issues. Uh, came up. Your, your questions, as always, were insightful, and I always say thank you to our viewers for being active, you know, viewers, active participants in the conversation with Stan Dogbe. Last week, I shared some statistics uh, uh, with you about um, mental health, which shows that about 13% um, uh, of um, Ghanaians have you know, mental issues to, to, to deal with, uh, about 30% of our adult population. Uh, is estimated to be affected by mental health disorders of varying forms. And in, in managing these patients, we also spoke about the, the psychotic medications that are, that are used and the fact that uh, there is no information on the efficacy uh, or, or side effects of these uh, psychotropic medicines that, that are used. Um, tonight, uh, we'll, be, we'll be going deeper into the issues by focusing on suicide, clinical psychology, and bipolar disorders as I announced earlier. Everyone is different and that's why we experience depression in many different ways. Tonight I uh, would advance the conversation further on the symptoms, the causes, the diagnosis and treatment of um, the clinical depression, uh, bipolar disorder and others. So Sarah, thank you very much and um, um, I, I know that our guests are going to, our, our viewers are going to uh, learn a lot again again tonight and um, I, I would want to start with uh, depression feel free to send your messages in if you have any questions for us or you have any issues you want to bring to attention 055-269-7939 is the whatsapp number you can also email us at wizardtv at wizardgroup.com and we would uh, do justice to the issues that you, you bring up so to start with Sarah, I wanted to find out, when we say someone is depressed, um, exactly what do we mean? Okay, so um, 
when we talk about depression, or when we say someone is depressed, we are usually referring to clinical depression. So for that, you have to be diagnosed. And it's characterized by a persistent low mood. So Low mood? Yes. Okay. So this person feels extreme sadness, which may or may not be explained. There are also... There's also a loss of interest in pleasurable activities or pleasure. And there are feelings of hopelessness or emptiness. And this goes on for the most part of the day, nearly every day for a period of at least two weeks. In addition to other symptoms like sleep disturbance, um, changes in appetite, which may be related to weight problems, so unexplained weight loss or unexplained weight gain. You could have poor concentration and poor decision-making skills. You could also have suicide ideation. You could have symptoms of inappropriate guilt, um, irritability as well, and other symptoms like weightlessness or the person feels they, they have no meaning in life. Other symptoms also include social isolation or withdrawal. So this there, person... There, there, there seem to be, you know, so many things that, 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 that reflect, you know... Um, exactly. That one, one is depressed. And exactly. I, and I, I notice you qualify it with clinical depression. Yes. I, I qualified it because usually you hear people saying, I'm depressed. But they use it so loosely. To just reflect how we are feeling or an issue that is is getting us a little trouble exactly whatever. it goes beyond that it goes beyond to, to be suffering from depression. depression it goes beyond that and you have to be diagnosed um sadness is a part of life a normal part of life and when you're going through tough times it's okay to feel um overwhelmed that doesn't necessarily mean that you are depressed except when you have experienced the symptoms I listed earlier, and the duration has been going on for at least two weeks. That's where you're more likely to start considering seeking help because you might be dealing with depression. Often, many of us may be experiencing some of these um, symptoms, symptoms as, you, as you listed, but we, we, we may not realize that um, there's a possibility of us beginning to suffer from clinical depression because you spoke about weight gain or loss you know the first thing one realizes when you are gaining more weight is maybe i'm eating too much or i'm eating at the wrong time in the evening so then you begin to stop eating in the evenings and all that now what what happens when these are symptoms of clinical depression but you do not realize it on time um okay so let me use the the weights for example. So there are times when for one reason or another someone may want to lose weight and they may resort to measures like diet exercise. With that one you are actively trying, intentionally trying to lose weight. But when you experience a situation where you didn't intend to lose weight but you see that you are losing weight, that's is a sign that something is going on and you need to seek help. It's the same for eating. Sometimes people resort to comfort eating, okay? So in an attempt to escape an unpleasant situation or avoid dealing with overwhelming stress and emotional distress, they resort to nibbling on snacks, sweets, and all these things that are unhealthy. And that's where you realize that you are actually gaining weight. And then also, stress can also lead to weight changes. Anytime you are stressed, your body accumulates the stress hormone cortisol. And that can lead to a host of other problems. problems. Yes, including um, storing body fats. And usually you store most of that body fat in your abdominal region. So you end up seeing a lot of fat on this side of your 
your body. What, what, what happens when you do not realize that these symptoms, you know, um, are leading you to uh, a clinical stage, you know, of depression for which you should be seeking help? Okay. So, um, when you see that there's significant impairment in everyday functioning, so you come to work, you're not able to concentrate. So pre previously, if, you were, if your performance was about, let's say, 100%, now you come to work, you can't even finish one task at a time. Or you are sleeping at work, or you are so irritable that the slightest thing a colleague says or does just sets you off. You end up having problems at work. So the symptoms I listed cause significant distress. And the distress can permeate in several settings or areas of your life. So if you are a married couple, it's definitely going to affect your marriage. Do children get depressed? Yes. <laughs> children get depressed, but their manifestation of depression is quite different from adults. What, what, so are, what are these? For a child who is depressed, you see, so these are younger children. You see that they become overly clingy. So children, as they grow in age, like to explore or have some level of autonomy. But you see that this child is clinging to their parents. They don't want to be around anyone else. Another sign is irritability. Some children would show sadness, but most of the time you find them being extremely irritable. And then they may refuse to go to school. Children are usually very excited to go to school, but then all of a sudden, your child doesn't want to go to school. That's a sign that something is going on and you need to seek attention. In addition to sleep disturbance and then appetite changes. For adolescents, you see more irritability, social isolation or withdrawal and they could be indulging in substance or alcohol as a way to escape. I mean, if, if children and adolescents also suffer from depression, then obviously depression is not caused by a broken heart. Because <laughs> <laughs> to, to, for, for many people, when you're trying to say, oh, she's, she's depressed, or she's, well, he's had a broken heart, so he's depressed. <laughs> but it means that broken hearts themselves, by itself, does not cause depression. Other, other things around it is what causes, cause, causes the depression. Yes. So depression, as you said, depression is caused by many factors. Working hard could trigger depression for someone and not for, for another. another. Yes. Can lack of sleep cause depression? Okay. So um, sleep is very important. When we sleep, our brain is able to get rid of toxins in the body. The body is also able to repair itself when there's damage or there's an infection going on. So if you don't sleep, you are harming yourself. But a lack of sleep in itself is a symptom of a health crisis. Usually you find people reporting to the hospital, so in this case seeking help, and one of the first concerns that they bring up is sleep disturbance. So usually that will be the precipitating factor that somebody would want to seek help because they can't sleep. The, the, I, I, I'm, how, how many hours is the recommended um, period or time for one to, to sleep that you say that you are able to sleep well or sleep well? Okay. So for adults, the hours is usually it usually ranges between six to eight hours, but you need um, four cycles of 90 minutes uninterrupted sleep. So if you have these then, four then, cycles then of, I don't have a problem. of 90 minutes. I, 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 was I was going to say that I think I, I, have, you I have a have huge <laughs> problem, you know, because I, I don't sleep for six hours, you know, so, but at least, yes, I, I do, I do, I do those cycles, at least I do. 90 minutes. I, yesterday I slept about... Four cycles of the 90 minutes. I, I, okay, so yesterday I slept about... Just after midnight, I slept off, I think, for about an hour. I woke up, stayed up for a while, slept again about 3 o'clock, woke up at 4, 
and then hit the road driving back to Accra. On average, I sleep about four hours or so. You need you need uninterrupted <laughs> six to eight hours of sleep. <laughs> There are, there, are, there are a lot of people like me. So, yes, but so depending on your work we, we, schedule we need, and other we need, things. We need, we need to sleep a lot more. Yes, you do. We need you to do. sleep a lot you more. Do. But now, the, 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 the list of things that, that can trigger uh, depression appears infinite because I'm looking at all the things that you, you, you listed. But what, what are the common triggers of depression? Okay. So I'll start with social and economic factors. So um, poverty oh, or yeah. low, <laughs> yes, <laughs> can trigger <laughs> symptoms of depression. <laughs> and um, you are having grief or death of a loved one. Um, grief can be complicated sometimes. So when it becomes complicated, it can trigger symptoms of depression. Um, you have even situations like situations that you think are positive. Usually we associate negative situations as causing or leading to depression. But you could have positive situations like taking on a new job role that can trigger depression for others. The birth of a new child, some mothers go through postpartum depression. So the depression shortly after giving birth or months after giving birth. And then you have other social factors like um, relationship problems, um, issues at school, so interpersonal issues can also trigger depression. Um, you have abuse or trauma can also trigger symptoms of depression. And then you also have biological um, factors or causes. So where there has been some changes in your brain chemistry, it can um, trigger symptoms of depression. You are watching Wizard TV Insights here on Wizard TV on your HD Plus decoder or Multi TV decoder. If you are watching us on Facebook or YouTube, thank you for joining in. You've listen, you are listening to uh, Sarah uh, Texan. She is a clinical psychologist, and today we are seeking to break down the issues um, relating to some mental health uh, challenges, depression. Um, suicide and also bipolar disorder. If you have any questions uh, based on what you've heard so far, you can send us a message 055-269-7939. You can also email us at wazertv at wazergroup.com and we'll take your questions. Um, if you have questions that you send us by Facebook, we'll be glad to also take that. Our Facebook uh, handle is wazertv. Wazer TV on Facebook and um, Marina Koku writes on Facebook that beautiful and smart lady. Yes, she is. I, I do. I can see that you are you are enjoying the the conversation. Zakari Mohammed Sabiu says um, I'm watching you from meme and uh, Kobe Enyu says uh, I think 90% uh, of um, there are about 90% of mental health issues in Ghana and Africa as well. No, that's 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 to the extreme. Uh, Kobe, uh, you are welcome to join the conversation and uh, we'll be glad. Thank you. Your questions are also coming in. Uh, from WhatsApp. Uh, I see a question about suicide. We'll get to suicide shortly, so I'll be able to deal with the, the issues on, on that. So, now, Sarah, the, the <coughs> question I wanted to, uh, I want to ask Ness is, how, how can you determine if an illness is causing depression or, 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 or depression is what is causing a, a certain illness that you are, you are uh, facing? Okay. So, like you said, it, it goes both ways. So, um, a, a physical illness can trigger symptoms of depression. So, for instance, if you've been diagnosed with a chronic illness, like diabetes or hypertension, and you're not able to manage, um, adapt to your diagnosis, can trigger symptoms of depression. 
because these chronic illnesses usually require lifestyle changes. So for instance, if you really like sweet and savory, if you've been diagnosed with an illness like diabetes, yeah. you have to cut back on these on things. And then also, um, depression can also trigger physical illness. So this starts with the mind and body connection. There's a connection between the mind and the body. Okay. So if one is in ill health and is not properly managed, can affect the other. So with depression, for instance, I mentioned some physical symptoms like sleep disturbance, poor appetite. There's also fatigue. I forgot to mention that earlier. There's fatigue and low energy levels. So, and then it can also um, trigger unexplained symptoms like headaches or stomach pain, back pain, etc. So if you're having depression and you're not managing it well, it can lead to these physical symptoms, which could also lead to other physical illnesses. Why are women, why is it said that women, women are more likely to, to, to get depression? Okay, so for this um, research shows that as, so from puberty, there's a surge in hormones, and a surge in oestrogen levels, progesterone, and all of that can account for why more women um, experience depression. Other research also suggests that women are more sensitive to interpersonal um, relationships, whereas men are more external career or goal-oriented um, relationships. There's also other studies that suggest that because there are some depression-related illnesses, so I mentioned postpartum depression earlier, and we know that majority of the human population is, um, the ratio is more women than men. And you are seeing more women uh, present with postpartum depression. There's also postmenopausal depression. So all these numbers contribute to why the number of women is higher for depression than men. Okay. So, I mean, the, 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 there's a depression question that relates to suicide, but I'll, I'll push it to, 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 to the tail end so that I can... We can we can balance it uh, very well, but okay. we'll, we'll, if someone suffers from depression and and it gets managed, can the person get or suffer from depression again? Uh, it's not uncommon to see recurrent depressive episodes. Um, more people would have multiple episodes of depression than those who have depression once in their lifetime. But it all depends on the individual, the treatments that they get. So the fact that you have re-experienced symptoms of depression does not mean no progress has been made. Right? The first step is usually seeking help, admitting that there's a problem, and then seeking help. And when you go for treatment, so from, I'm speaking from the point of psychotherapy, your therapist will teach you, or your psychologist, will teach you um, adaptive coping mechanisms. So these things you would use throughout your life, anytime there are warning signs that a relapse may okay. So it's important that people are taught to be aware of um, warning signs and then take active steps before it gets into a full-blown illness where you need to be hospitalized, etc. How long does uh, depression last? Is there a time period? Can it come and go or it takes time to manage it? Mm, so for some it can be from 
four to six months or six to eight months the thing is it, it varies from person to person yes depending on the treatments your adherence to the treatment protocol so if you are put on medications are you taking the medications religiously i know most people don't like taking medications but when you're dealing with illness and mental illness more specifically you may have to take medications for an extended period of time but consistency is very important what if the treatment does not help okay so there are a lot of evidence-based treatments available in dealing with depression but in the event of treatment resistance depression we bring out the big guns as i'll call it so you have the electroconvulsive therapy that's the ect that has been proven to effectively treat resistant um, treatment depression and then you have transcranial magnetic stimulation um, that one uses um, a magnetic coil over the forehead and then electromagnetic impulses are sent to the brain to stimulate the idea is the brain activity is low zero, zero. and this will stimulate that. exactly but the difference between that and the ect is the ect induces seizure and is painful compared to the other so i mean modern ecg is done with less pain but it's still and also the therapeutic benefits sometimes wear off compared to the transcranial and there's also i think i've heard of deep brain stimulation that one um magnetic um, chips are inserted into that is when your depression is stubborn very very stubborn so those ones should get you out of that state yes. this is a conversation with stan Dobe. tonight we are discussing suicide clinical depression and bipolar bipolar disorder my guest madam sarah Texan, a clinical psychologist, send your questions 055-269-7939 or email us at wizardtv at wizardgroup.com. Uh, Joyce jo, jo um, Osarime watching from uh, Nigeria. Thanks for your question via mail. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss it shortly. Um, but this is a uh, good evening, Wizard TV. I am Josephus Texan. So, uh, Madam Sarah is my mother or my big sister. Please, my question is, can stress constitute depression? And as a student, how do you manage stress? Okay. Um, stress can trigger symptoms of depression. Anytime people feel stressed, they feel overwhelmed and they are unable to adequately cope with stresses. So anything that causes stress. So um, part of stress management involves identifying your stresses. So what is causing stress. the stress. And then if it's something that um, you can avoid, you find a way to avoid it. If it is something that cannot be avoided, then you are taught how to adapt and adjust your life in a way that would help you manage or cope better with your current situation and i think as part of stress management also involves time time management as well and then problem solving when you have problem solving skills it's helpful to get out of situations and not feel so overwhelmed which can lead to stress Hello, I'm enjoying tonight's program. I want to know whether being broke without money can also trigger depression. Oh, but you had Sarah say already that, you know, economic issues, poverty. Yes. Poverty <laughs> can trigger, it can seriously trigger depression. <laughs> because um, our world runs on money. So if you don't have money, it's, it's difficult. It, it, it can. Very and really, Habila says, I really appreciate today's conversation with Sarah. Um, ED from the OT region says, how do you notice a mental problem or challenge in children, let's say eight years and below? 
So eight is in below. Um, for depression, I know I mentioned some signs earlier. Yeah. So being clingy, um, and yes, getting clinginess, and irritability, that. sleep cha um, sleep disturbance, um, appetite changes. So this child who um, you know, children are different. Some children have big appetites, others don't have um, much of an appetite. Mm -hmm. So if you notice any behavior that is not characteristic of your child, that is something to look out for. And then you have refusing to go to school. I think children eight years and younger are in school by then. And like I said, children are always, usually or most of the time, very excited to go to school. So the moment you notice that this child doesn't want to be going to school, you need to probe and ask questions. Let me take two more questions and then we'll, we'll go on, we'll take some messages and then we, we, we come back. Um, uh, Obed, you keep sending a message about her melodious voice. We've heard that one. So I'll take, I'll take your real question. Can, can poor performance bring about mental depression? It doesn't say what, what poor performance it was, but let's say maybe in school, at work, in okay. bed, or whatever. Can, can it bring about mental depression? Yes, it can. It can. No, um, generally, when you don't perform your usual best, it, it doesn't feel good. Right, <laughs> so if it becomes a pattern, it's even worse because now it will lead to you overthinking, getting worried, second guessing yourself, and then before you realize the effort that you're supposed to put in, you're not putting in the effort. So you see that things are not going the way you want it, or you are failing, or you're not performing, and then that can also make you. Um, feel sad and if that continues for a very long time it can trigger depression a depressive episode so over time you lose concentration you're unable to concentrate you because you're always second guessing yourself your judgments and your decision making skills are impaired and then before you know it you might become hopeless um, because you think that there's no way out of your situation and then you may or may not attempt um, suicide, yes. We'll, we'll be getting to suicide shortly and there are lots of questions on there. I'm currently battling depression. I'm trying everything possible not to exacerbate my condition. I've had to sometimes stay up the whole night without necessarily having to do anything. Do you think taking solace in some psychoactive substances like cannabis to upset the symptoms works? Because, frankly speaking, I think it works for me. This is Charles Anaho from Bob. Okay. So, um, while there may be that high effect from cannabis, which explains why people like indulging in it, there's research that shows that it contains um, certain chemicals that are not good for the central nervous system. So short term, you might be getting away with certain things, but long term, its effect yeah, 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 building up. Yes, its effect on you is not so great. And if you are dealing with depression, the last thing you want to do is indulge in substances. That will actually worsen your condition. Charles? And all those who are thinking that way or doing that, uh, short-term things are not the best, you know. So um, the advice is that uh, desist or don't get tempted to go there. You're watching Wazo TV Insights. My name is Stan Dubey. Our guest tonight is Sarah Texan, clinical psychologist. And we are discussing suicide. We are talking about clinical depression. And we'll also be dealing with bipolar uh, this other. I see a question uh, here on Facebook that says that it seems there is a very thin line between depression and bipolar. Um, can Ms. Texan make the difference clear for us? We'll tackle that uh, when we come back uh, from this break. We'll take some messages uh, and get back to you.
dark and dangerous place. Why live in darkness when the light of God's word has solutions? When you are working with God, you must learn to trust God. Sometimes the things that look inconvenient, it is working for your good. Losses will come, victories will come. But all mixed together is pushing you to where your silver, your gold, your destiny, your anointing is waiting for you. Tune in to Air Power with Kako Baden, providing strength for today and hope for tomorrow. Watch Air Power with Kako Baden on Windsor TV every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. and on Saturdays at 7.30 a.m. Get ready for a transformation. Air Power, teaching the nations with signs and wonders. Your flight is ready to leave. Sit back and relax and enjoy the flight. From the Lenclay Sports Stadium to the Santiago Bernabeu, from the Boko Marina to the Madison Square Gardens, we would make sure that you do not miss out on all the scoop, the kicks, and all the flicks in the world of sports, from association football to boxing to hockey to tennis. We make sure that we bring the action to you right in your home. And for our punters out there as well, we have something very special for you in the Investors Corner. Join me on Wazer TV every Tuesday from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. for Ghana's number one sports post-mortem show, The Arena. My name is Kosi Fiaka, and I would be your host. This is a conversation with Stan Dobe on Wazer TV Insights. And tonight our conversation is on suicide, clinical depression, and bipolar disorder. As part of our conversation on the broad topic of mental health and the Ghanaian society. Our guest, Sarah Texan, clinical psychologist. And um, we've uh, spent the last few minutes talking about um, depression. We will not look at suicide and um, I'll, I'll start with a, uh, a, a message from Emmanuel Chumisi who sent his message from Kumasi Atosu in, uh, in Kumasi. Good evening uh, Mr. Standogbe and to your guest. God bless you for talking about this topic. Stigmatization has been the driver and is the reason for suicide because patients do not have the zeal to come out for help and support. So as we talk about depression and other mental health conditions, we can't disregard emphasizing the need to allow affected people to turn up for treatment and also be diagnosed. We should talk about the depression with the healthcare practitioners who become the culprits of medical negligence. God bless you for this educative program. And uh, thank you very much, um, Emmanuel. And then, uh, so then there's this other question that I want you to just start with that says, is suicide a total mental health problem? Okay. Um, suicide is a, a health crisis globally. And um, it's not, um, how do I say it? For lack of a better word, it is not a diagnosis it can be a symptom of a mental health illness yes so if someone is suicidal we need to probe further because there could be um, an issue of mental illness like depression bipolar anxiety etc and, and and is it possible for is it possible to, to predict suicide or suicidal behavior in a person? Oh, okay. So um, there are suicide risk um, assessments, sorry. So with that, you can 
be able to determine the likelihood that someone um, may or may not attempt suicide. Yes, so you can you can predict the likelihood that somebody is going to attempt suicide or not. I I, I can imagine trying to even inflict some pain on myself, on my skin, and how painful it would be, and the fact that I can't even go the step of using a sharp object to cut myself. So why, why, why would anybody want to attempt or commit suicide? Okay. Um, so there are lots of reasons why someone would um, commit suicide or attempt suicide. So one of the reasons could be hopelessness. Um, life is filled with ups and downs. Everyone experiences some level of emotional pain. But not everyone who experiences emotional pain would have thoughts of suicide or even go ahead to attempt suicide. So when there is hopelessness, the person feels they are not able to deal with their situation. They will never, the future doesn't look good for them. There's a high chance that people will commit suicide. When there's a feeling of being a burden to either family or friends, and there's a low sense of belonging, that can tr cause somebody to contemplate suicide and then go ahead to commit suicide. Also, when people experience increasing emotional pain, um, can trigger suicide ideations. Suicide can also be a way to deal with an aversive state of mind. So somebody feels the only way is to end it all. They might contemplate suicide. There was a research in Ghana by Adinkra that found out that people would rather commit suicide than be dishonored. And so there is this saying that bear man soon. Um, so you find that men would rather commit suicide than deal with whatever issues or emotional pain that they are dealing with. I think it also stems from a cultural thing mm -hmm. as well, yes. And, and um, uh, you know, some details that my production team provided that in the first two quarters of 2021, you know, um, statistics show that 417 suicide-related deaths had been recorded across the country. And um, this was according to the Ashanti Regional Coordinator of Mental Health, Faustina Nuaku, who says that Ashanti Region at the time was leading with 61 deaths, and Eastern Region followed uh, sharply with 60 cases and um, Upper East 47, Geta Accra 37. And she also explained that a greater number of the victims were the youth, you know, and um, she described as alarming and, and a threat to, 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 the, to the national economy. It, it, and and it, it, because you say that at the increased research talked about people um, would, would rather commit suicide than, than feel dishonored, you know, than feel getting embarrassed in, yes. in, in the system. So, yes. so and that's why we can say that suicide may not necessarily be a mental health, you know, um, problem. It, it is. It is because um, suicide is a symptom of a mental illness. Mm. And we need to understand that people who are contemplating suicide have lost hope. It, for them, there is no way out of their situation except to die. So if you can get these people to be hopeful again, you might possibly be able to avert suicide. Uh, um, Emmanuel from Atosu was talking, what, what he was just going to talk about was about mental health awareness and education and all that. So help us out. What should we do if someone comes and tells you that, I'm thinking about suicide. What, what, what do you do? I mean, you, you, you walk into the office, a colleague comes to you and says that, I feel like killing myself, I feel like committing suicide. 
what, 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 what would be your advice for, for us to do? So, the first thing I would say is take them serious until proven otherwise. Because for them to actually communicate that they want to end their lives, it's actually very difficult for them to even admit to themselves that they are unable to deal with their situation and they're even thinking about harming ourselves. In our society, we frown so much upon suicide. Even our laws criminalize suicide. For someone to come and confine with you, that's a big thing and you need to keep that confidence. The second thing is you need to guide this person to seek appropriate help. So if the person is close to you, you can find out why they feel they want to die or why they are contemplating suicide. In there somewhere may be possible triggers or causes to why they are feeling the way they are feeling. But it's important that you refer them to seek professional help. It's very, very important. I'm a student in SHS2. Anytime people annoy me, I try committing suicide. I always feel I am of no use to everyone. I cry a lot after using sharp objects on my skin. Is it a mental sickness? It's a sign that there's something going on. How can we help this student? So this person needs um, to report to a general practitioner. So when you report to a general practitioner, they will be able to refer you to see a specialist, either a psychiatrist or a psychologist. But anyone who knows... Since you are watching, um, we'll call you back after the program. Yes. And um, we, we would help get you a psychologist and um, based on uh, the assessments, let you see a psychiatrist. Once you have identified uh, that when people annoy you, that is how you feel. It's as you've heard, it's important that we manage the situation now before it gets it gets bad. Okay. So um, indulge us. We'll call you back after after the show, and um, don't avoid us. You you. Thanks for coming out, and you need you need that you need that help. Yeah. You can you can go on with what you want to say. You were saying something before I I, I came. You are fine. Okay. So <laughs> can can the risk of suicide be inherited? Is it, is it one of the things that can be inherited? Um, I, I wouldn't say inherited per se, because if we say that suicide can be inherited, then <laughs> it means anyone who's close relative, so your mother or your father has committed suicide, would mean that you are also going to, but that's not the case. But what I would say is there is um, a genetic um, correlation to suicide. So if there's a family history of suicide, if your mother has um, committed suicide or attempted suicide, there's that genetic uh, link there. You are at greater risk of suicide and other mental illnesses. But it doesn't mean that you have inherited. If you are able to build your problem solving and conflict resolution skills, Hopefully, you can avert some of them. Yes. So, um, I want to take uh, a few more questions from here so that I don't uh, drive it down. Della in Kumasi, uh, thank you, Stan and Sarah, for the educative program. I've been educated a lot. Uh, this is the difference between you, Stan, and the others. Mm. Good evening. Um, I so much appreciate Miss Sarah. Ms. Serres clear cut knowledge on the subject. She has really refreshed my memory on clinical psychology as a public health specialist. Thank you, Stan and Wizard TV, for tonight's program. This is PK from Denu. Um, good evening, Wizard TV. This is Emmanuel from Agona Suedru. My question Can depression relate to being a psychopath? <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting question. Um, for psychopathy, 
there are personality um, issues involved. You have a person who shows an increased lack of empathy for others. You have somebody who has a lot of disruptive behavior, defiant behavior, engaging in in law law. How how do I say? It? Engaging in defiant behavior, so rule breaking, all, all that. that. Yeah. Then you're also seeing antisocial personality. So this person is just antisocial. They don't. They are not pro-social in any way. Yes, and. Yes, they could also suffer from depression because research shows that most of these psychopaths actually have a history of abuse and neglect. So that could, there could be some underlying issues of depression. But I wouldn't say that <laughs> depression can cause psychopathy. No. Juliet Gelam is watching from Bafusam in Cameroon, and she says. Hello, this is my best program on Wazor TV. Oh, thank you very much. I, I hope that my channel manager would recognize this uh, uh, very strongly. Um, but she wants to know whether depression can lead to hallucination. Okay. Um, so, if you are having depression in addition to psychotic symptoms like hallucination, then you are looking at psychotic um, depression. With bipolar disorder, there is um, a history of depression. There is also sometimes uh, manifestation, psychotic symptoms like hallucinations and delusions. So you could have either a psychotic depression episode or you could have bipolar if you've had a history of mania or hypomania yes then um we we, we have this one from edmond in sugakope good evening stan your guest is intelligently brilliant in the field my question is there anything like broken heart in psychology if not what's the right term <laughs> the right term is emotional pain. Emotional pain. <laughs> emotional pain. Okay. That's the right term. But we usually say broken hearts because of how it feels. Mm. Emotional pain can hurt just as much as physical pain. And usually you find people describing it in their hearts. hearts. Hence the broken hearts um, statements. So yes. But your heart doesn't get not literally, literally. doesn't get broken. Alexa J. Mafo is watching from Takrade and he says, please, I want to know, can stress lead to stroke? Um, I think in extreme cases, in extreme cases, if stress triggers high blood pressure consistently and that leads to uh, blood vessels, you know, best thing in the brain you could have stroke you could have stroke yes uh, romanzi from dambai in the OT region says i'm really learning a lot from the program what could be the reason for one to be imagining things that are not real while sleeping while sleeping. Yes, while sleeping. I mean, I mean, you can't imagine whilst you're sleeping. You can't, yes. You can only be dream. But I, I'm sure, I'm sure, is is I'm that sure, a dream? I'm sure, I'm sure uh, romancing means that maybe as you sit or, you know, just sitting there and then you're imagining things. Or oh, you're having a vision. A vision, you know. <laughs> and then you can, you can come out of it and begin to prophesy. <laughs> Romanzi, thanks for thanks for your uh, message. There's a question here about bipolar disorder. We would uh, tackle that pretty pretty shortly. Um, it's it's been an insightful evening, and this is Amma. I was sexually abused and have had recurring thoughts of suicide. I am receiving the help I need, though it's not easy. Let's make mental health issues less shameful to discuss. Thank you very much, Amma. Um, Charles Anaho from Boku is back again and says that 
I have followed the conversation and invariably noticed that anything negative in, in, in parentheses borders on mental health. Does that suggest that when you lose your loved ones and you become down, uh, is that also mental? Is that also a mental health issue? I strongly believe that some feelings are just natural phenomena. So you are talking about grief here. Grief is natural and everyone differs in how they grieve. Um, so usually our diagnostics manual classifies depression associated with grief. Part of the grieving process, um, you find a bit of depression where this person is extremely sad. But the difference between that depression associated with grief and that of clinical depression is that the depression is only about the loved one that you've lost. So for instance, you've lost your parents and any time you think about your parents, it makes you sad and you begin to cry, right? That's different because it's about um, the loved one that you've lost. Usually with the grieving process, you don't become hopeless. But with clinical depression, you are actually hopeless. And also, yes, sure, there are feelings of guilt sometimes associated with both um, depression and the grief. But the grief is mostly guilt about what I could have done for my loved one while they are alive. Did I do enough? Could I have done anything differently? But the guilt associated with depression is usually misplaced guilt about something that has happened either presently or in your past. Edmond Agbeshi, right? But, okay. Sorry, so, but I also say this, that um, if your grieving begins to significantly impact your life, causes a lot of distress, um, you are not able to concentrate whether you're at school, at work, at home, it's affecting interpersonal relationships, then you might be looking at complicated grief. You need to seek help for that. Yes. Edmond Agbeshi Sakpleka uh, writes on Facebook and asks, what could make a rich and worthy person attempt to commit suicide when poverty is also as associated with depression <laughs> or emotional pain <laughs> and hopelessness? Yeah, that's that's, that's a good one. <laughs> the rich also have their problems, right? So while money may not be the problem of the rich it could be something emotional or social yes so remember that depression is not just caused by poverty <laughs> poverty is one of the social many social factors that can cause depression amongst other factors yes we're still discussing suicide now on our three issue uh, conversation tonight we're talking about suicide we are talking about clinical depression and bipolar disorder the program is Wazor tv insights my name is stan dobe and our guest tonight is madam sarah texan she is a clinical psychologist continue to send your questions in 055-269-7939 or email us at Wazor tv at Wazor group dot com um this one is from mfa in a plow and sarah she says i have noticed some changes about myself since last year i get irritated easily i have lost weight i hardly sleep at night and sometimes i start crying for no reason and i always want to be left alone to the extent that i have to quit my job because i felt combining my job with school was the cause but there's still there's but there's been no improvement am i depressed i'd rather say am i suffering from depression but i'm smart oh you are a smart and calm guest she says oh thank you um you you might possibly be suffering from depression and what, what must she do in this case um seek help you need to speak to a professional so I can give um, a number. So I'm part of a non-governmental organization called Psychological Relief for Women International. So we deal specifically with helping women in crisis, offering psychological support, psychological relief for them. So shortly after, I'll give my number. You out. can put the number out. I mean, for, okay. for those who want to, who want to take the number, um, psychologists 
for women international yes psychology psychological psych relief. relief psychological relief for, for women, women international. international that's a the body that sarah texan belongs to and um, um they will be able to provide you with uh, some support you can call you can call them uh, okay so the number now um zero five five three two nine eight eight five zero two seven two five zero two six 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 okay so so those are the numbers zero five five three two nine eight three three nine or zero two seven two five zero two six 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 the numbers will be on the screen shortly if you have a problem and uh, you think that you need uh, psychological help you can talk to them we would also be available if you send us a message or call us we would gladly pass on the numbers to you anita yeboa from asamanke she says thank you very much for your program it's very educative um thank you stan and your guest for the teaching uh, this is joe from kaswa who says Please, can sexual activity release depression? <laughs> Very interesting question. <laughs> so, um, another symptom of depression can be... Um, so, remember I stated that there's a loss of interest in pleasurable activities. So, one of the symptoms could also be low sexual activity. So, um, there's... Research that suggests that sexual activity actually re helps release certain brain chemicals that help us feel good. So I'm not really sure what the science is behind that, but I'm sure that <laughs> that can play a role somehow. <laughs> I was an officer cadet in the United States Military Academy. I was discharged and jailed in solitary confinement for one year, blindfolded, handcuffed, and brought to Ghana against my will. I slit my wrist and was saved by a Ghanaian immigrant doctor. I have asked him why I want to die ASAP, Alexander, at East Legon. You want to die? So he's suicidal. Don't die. Yes, suicide is not an option, Alexander. Um, there are other ways to help you cope or deal with whatever it is that you're dealing with. So please don't commit suicide. But this, I also put um, the number of some suicide helplines that anyone who is contemplating suicide can call. Can't, can't speak, can't yes. Speak to. Um, uh, this one is uh, I am in Kufuidua and I've been taking mental health medicine for almost ten years. I want to stop taking the medicine. Can I stop? <laughs> please don't stop. <laughs> Before you want to stop, I advise you to speak with your psychiatrist and your psychologist. Um, I know you've been taking these medications for a long time, but sometimes in dealing with such illnesses, you may have to take the medications for quite some time. But your doctor will gradually wean you off when he feels that you are stable enough to go without the medication. So that is better than you abruptly stopping on your own. Because if you do that and you haven't consulted your psychiatrist or your psychologist, you may feel better for a while only to relapse later. So, so please do not stop taking your medicine. So and, speak, uh, to your speak to your, 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 your health uh, professional that is there. And let's, yes. let's him or her know that these are the thoughts that you are having. Yeah, you want to stop. So so I stop. That's the edge. Uh -huh. Because I thought if you're not careful, at some point you get, he or she he will just stop, you know, taking the medicine. medicine. Let me not take it today and see what is going to happen. Um, I have this one. Ken from Aguna Suedu says, "Good evening, Stan. Please ask uh, your guest the signs of mental disorder." Okay, we, we, we've we've mentioned that a number of times. But she says because sometimes I can stare at something strangely <laughs> and start laughing at it. I will suddenly come to my senses and realize I am in town. Wow, <laughs> what, what what was the strange sight? Yeah, I mean, what, you know, she, she she just stares at something strangely. You know what I mean? So, and then she he will start laughing. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> And that's what I'm sure the friends will say to to her. instead of her fight, trying to find out what the, what the strange what the problem, what yes, the strange things are. Then be able yeah. to help her with um, you know. Um, 
assistance and all that. Mm. You know. So so what 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 should he do? What should Ken do in this circumstance? Yeah, I, I want to know like what what is the strange so, so thing? What, what are the strange things that you look at and how do you look at so when you say you're looking at something strangely? Can you can you explain it to us yes. so that um, And is it something that others can see that others can't see that you, you are, can you see? Yes, so. then we, can, we can do that. Okay. Um, George is asking, what is the consequence of overthinking? Overthinking. Um, sometimes when you overthink a situation, you are meticulous in the point that, in the sense that you become thorough with whatever it is that you're doing. But sometimes it might not be so helpful. So you end up jumping into conclusions where you shouldn't or you end up misinterpreting things where you shouldn't. So overthinking is not so great depending on the outcome of, of, what, of what it is. Yes. Um, Alex from Kumasi, what's the difference between antisocial personality disorder and depression? Thank you for this very educative program. Okay, so personality disorders are different from, depression is a mood disorder which is different from a personality disorder. So antisocial personality disorder, you're looking at character traits of a person. So this person is, <laughs> you find them engaging in rule-breaking behavior. Um, you find them socially withdrawn or um, unattached to society. So these people will always be secluded, always be loners, yeah. if you will. But when you talk about depression, you're talking about mood disorder. So it has to do with how people are feeling and how they are thinking and how that is affecting their behavior. Yes. So, so well, I'm sure I'm sure you have inspired somebody. Wise from who is asking, is the clinical psychology program a first degree program? Uh, so, first degree you can do psychology, like general psychology, but then you have to specialize, so you have to do your master's in clinical psychology, which I have done. Then you can go ahead to specialize further by getting your doctorate degree, which I will do which hopefully will later. Yes. Which you, you will do shortly, I guess. Um, Ike says, I, I have had suicidal thoughts before uh, in 2020. I felt hopeless until I received words of encouragement from my godmother and I have never experienced that again. Miss mm -hmm. Sarah is beautiful, humble and intelligent. Thank you for the program. Um, my mom was on antidepressants since 2014 and in 2020 she refused to continue taking her drugs. But she kind of, she, but she feels better. Does it mean her case may resurface someday? It might. It possibly might. The thing is, the reason why most people opt to stop taking the medications, even though they've been taking for a while, is they feel they are better, right? So once you are, you are better, there's no point in taking the medication. But you're not just taking it to, to feel better. This is supposed to help your body regulate your mood. So think of it like, um, I always use this example when I'm explaining things to my clients. When you are on the road, there are traffic lights on the road. These traffic lights help to regulate traffic and bring some form of law and order. When the traffic light goes off, it's chaos. You find cars moving where they shouldn't, everyone struggling to get their way until the policeman comes in. The drugs are like the policeman where the traffic lights are not working. So if you take the policeman away, when the traffic lights are not working, it's going to be chaos. So what you are seeing is, because the drugs have been in your mom's system for quite some time, she will feel okay for some time, until when it wears off, she will have the symptoms again. So please, if you want to stop taking the medication, always speak with your, your doctors. The doctors will do all the necessary checks, do your blood work, make sure that things are relatively stable then they will taper you off the medication. So if you are put on a 20 milligram dose, they might reduce it to a 10 milligram or even a 5 milligram or a 2 milligram and then gradually take you off. Moses Amagayi, also uh, aka fear not, humility, 
um, is sending a message from Agbo Zuma Kliko in the Volta region. And uh, since you've, you've, you've given us a psychological name for broken heart, he, he says, can emotional pain lead you to madness? Um, it's, it's, it can lead to, in the sense that you could, it could trigger symptoms of a mental illness, which may not be properly dealt with or become complicated or unmanaged. So with time, if nothing is done about it, think of illness as having progression. So it can start with uh, mild form, and then it can progress into something moderate, and then it becomes something very severe. At the point where it gets to insanity, this person has lost insights. So this person doesn't know that something is horribly wrong with them. And then two, they may have lost touch with reality. So you want to deal with emotional pain as soon as you recognize it so it doesn't progress into something worse later on. A conversation with Stan Dobe on Wizard TV Insights with Sarah Texan, clinical psychologist, and you, our viewers out there, thanks for being active viewers of this program. We'll take some messages. When we come back, we'll discuss bipolar disorder and wrap up for the night. to sugar free freshly squeezed fruit juice choose green line fruit juice and smoothies filled with vitamin c calcium iron fiber and zinc every drop of green line juice and smoothies is naturally made to give you energy good health and refreshment enjoy your favorite green line orange pineapple passion watermelon pineapple and turmeric pineapple beetroot pineapple and ginger and healthy green green line fruit juice and smoothies powered by nature your flight is ready to leave sit back and relax and enjoy the flight Embarrassed. Too embarrassed to speak to a loved one. Too embarrassed to speak to your doctor. Too embarrassed when in our lifetime one in four black men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer. One in 12 black men will die from prostate cancer. Let me repeat that. One in four black men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer. One in 12 black men will die from prostate cancer disease. One in 12. That could be your dad, even your older brother, uncle, or grandfather. You need to make sure they are not embarrassed to speak to you or their doctor about it. Hey dad, have you had your prostate checked out? See, how hard is that? It's easy. Just start the conversation. Prostate cancer is survivable, if caught and treated early enough. Don't let embarrassment stop you having this important conversation. You may save someone's life, not just your own.
Thanks for staying with us on Wizo TV Insights. And my name is Stan Dugby. My guest, Sarah Texan, clinical psychologist. And we are about to now move to the third part of the program where we'll be talking about bipolar disorder. But BB says, good evening, Mr. Dugby. Interesting discussion going on. Please, working in a hotel is one of the most depressing work for the youth in our country. I almost died of depression and high blood pressure. Companies should adopt a way of helping their employees psychologically. It is very, very important. Most Ghanaians are dying slowly. It's good we are discussing this. Thank you very much. And we do hope that the awareness that this program is creating and other platforms uh, like that would, would, would help in achieving what you desire, where employers would know that they need to take the mental health of their employees as well um, um, seriously. Now, so um, bipolar. How different is it from clinical depression and oh, any symptoms? <coughs> okay. Um, so, bipolar and depression are different. When we say bipolar, you're looking at two extremes. So, people experience low moods, depression, and then high moods, what we call mania. Or hypomania. So with bipolar, there is a a history of a depressive episode, and then the person presents with symptoms of mania. So symptoms of mania includes increased um, or high energy levels. Then you have a decreased need for sleep. And not getting tired so this person can sleep two to three hours and they are good to go you also ha have um, feelings of euphoria or an elated mood this is unusual of this person um, they are also a talkativeness so this person talks very fast and then flights of ideas <laughs> So the person is talking, something comes to their mind, they jump onto something else, they jump onto something else, they never finish one topic that they are on. And then you could have sometimes delusions. So this person has a sense of importance that is more than they are. So for instance, this person may feel like they are the president of the country or they are the world's richest, the person in Ghana, when they are not, etc. And then you could have increased libido. So there's an, a high sex drive, and then there's also an increase in risk-taking behavior. So they engage in risky behavior, one-night stands, gambling, uh, going to business ventures on the spell. The moment they are very impulsive, I might add, and also very irritable as well. So these are some of the symptoms of mania. This is not an exhausting list, yes. but these are some. And, and, and this goes on for at least a week. So if you're experiencing these symptoms for a period of at least a week, you're looking at mania. What are the risk factors, the risk factors of bipolar, bipolar disorder? So um, some of the risk factors include social factors like abuse and neglect. There's research that shows that people who have a history of abuse and neglect actually have um, their life experiences are traumatic to the extent that it can alter the way the brain functions, i.e. the way the brain regulates mood and behavior, which can trigger symptoms of bipolar. You also have um, a history of this disease in the family. So that can increase your risk of getting this. Usually, you find that if somebody's first degree relative, so either the father, the mother, or the brother or the sister has experienced that, then it increases their chances of also getting this um, disorder. Then you have the biological symptoms like brain chemistry dysregulation. So other so these are some of the causes of of bipolar. Let, let, let's talk about treatment. What, what what treatment options are available to, to help manage bipolar disorder symptoms and, and well, let's even see a future episodes. So currently the treatments that we have, they are ev evidence-based treatments. So the treatments are based on research that have been tried and tested. One of the re um, 
treatment options includes medication so you could be given antipsychotics like your olanzapine haldol risperdal and then you could also be put on antidepressants so you have your SSRI like the fluzetine, sertraline or you could be put on mood stabilizers like lithium and valparate. And, wha wha and once you are taking your medications um, regularly and as prescribed? So it will help with ma regulating your mood, mood, managing those symptoms where your brain chemistry is out of balance. But it doesn't help with behavior symptoms or some maladaptive coping so that's where psychotherapy can comes in. in and research has proven that a combination of drugs and psychotherapy is usually more effective than either one on its own so with the psychotherapy they are different so you have cognitive behavior therapy dialectical behavior therapy and others that can be used to help people recognize triggers become aware of the triggers recognize unhelpful thoughts or thinking patterns that relate to their behavior. You can teach problem solving and conflict resolution as well. Thank you very much, uh, Sarah Texan. This has been another interesting conversation uh, about mental health, but um, time will not allow us to you know, continue some more. Lots of messages uh, come out. I'll just take a few before uh, we, we wrap up for today. Um, God bless you for this great enlightening program. Today is my first time watching. I'm really enjoying. Um, can serious physical pain like amputating part of the body lead to depression? Um, sorry, we can we can take responses because of the time. A bit of from Kaswa sent an interesting one. My partner takes a medication prescribed by a psychiatrist at the Ankafu um, uh, Hospital to calm him from getting angry excessively. My question: What will happen to him if he stops taking the medication? So, if he stops taking the medication, whatever he's taking the medication for, for would. We we'll come so, back. So, so he doesn't. He doesn't have. I mean, he doesn't have to stop taking the medication. He should just yes. continue taking the medication. George says, "How can I save someone else who I think is suffering from depression?" We we, we discuss that. Speak, speak to the person. Speak to him. Encourage him. Let him meet a, a psychiatrist and then yes. maybe a psychologist and then um, get solutions to to the problem. Uh, can I speak to Madam Sarah after the show? Yes, you can. We'll give you her number after the show. We've also, you know, shared their number. It's on the screen. Uh, 55 327 That's the Psychological Relief for Women International. It's an NGO that helps, you know, uh, with uh, all the issues that we discussed today. But after the show, we would also send you uh, Sarah's number. So you can speak to uh, her directly. Thank you very much for being a part of this two-part series on mental health and the Ghanaian society. Thank you very much, Sarah Texan, clinical Thank psychologist. You Thank me. you, Ganeta Kwe, who was with us uh, last week and also helped uh, create awareness and uh, teach us a lot about mental health. For, for us at Wizard TV, we are happy to continue to bring uh, these topics to you and um, help with providing you with uh, information and also educating you on uh, many of the. If there are topics that you think that we should uh, bring up for conversation, feel free to send us uh, a mail or send us a WhatsApp message about the topic. And we'll be glad to get uh, very knowledgeable guests like we have tonight to come in and um, help us to understand the issues. Um, Wazo TV is on your multi TV uh, and HD plus decoders, and you can also follow us on Facebook at Wazo TV and on YouTube uh, or channel also at Wazo TV. We all have moments in our lives when our spirits and moods are at their lowest. It may be the loss of a loved one, some unexpected life event, or maybe some personal struggles we are dealing with. This may be considered natural reactions to life events, but it will be quite problematic and an issue of concern if the sadness we feel is intense and continuous for an extended period of time into weeks or months. It could be a manifestation of clinical depression, 
and not just the sadness. The good news, however, is that depression can be treated much like any other health condition. The things that can trigger depression are unending. You can start improving your mental health disorder today by reaching out to a mental health professional, a psychiatrist, a psychologist, uh, or a, a physiotherapist uh, for help. I know it is a difficult situation opening up about your personal issues with someone, but for someone who is living with depression, talking to a trusted person is often the first step towards treatment and recovery. As a people, we must also make a conscious effort to provide the needed social support and education for people who are living with depression in order to help them manage their condition in the best way. Let's not be judgmental. Let's stop the stigmatization. Together, let's help each other beat depression and save life. My name is Stan Dugay, and you'll be watching Wazor TV Insights. Good night.